Hey, it's Rose the Moose, and another Minecraft tutorial for you today. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to build a secret elevator that can be hidden within a pillar. As you can see, I have a nice stone, well, it's not really stone, but white quartz building here. Just fly around it, get the looks of it. Walk in here, we have the nice high ceilings. Move in here, we have a nice room. But, you might be thinking, well, it looks like there's less room in there than the outside of the building. And you'd be right. All we gotta do is go over to here, hit this button, the pillar drops down, and we're pushed up, and we can then walk through this hallway. And we have a whole second story that we can hang out in. Some redstone is exposed, but we don't really need to have this wall open here. We can just easily seal it off. And when we're going to go back down, you hit this button, you walk on over, it drops down, you can drop down here, and then leave. And then this pillar goes back up. Just to show you guys what's happening, you push this button, the pillar drops, and then goes back up, springing the player up, as well as making it look just like an ordinary pillar in a building. Down here we have the redstone behind it. As you can see, it looks rather spread out, but that's just because of the layout of this building right here. The main part is this section. This area right here is over here just to transfer current upwards in a one by one area without using slime blocks, or else these blocks would have to be obsidian and be obvious. The same goes for here, except it's going down, so I had to use this hopper dropper system and when you push that button it just drops a block and really I guess you could push the button over and over again but you'd be there for a while before you got all the blocks out of there and it all goes into the space anyways and then right here we have our pulse extender and that lets this stay down for longer giving us just enough time to get out of the upper floor so the way this tutorial is gonna go is I'm gonna first teach you how to build this circuit right here and that's what's gonna initially launch the player up and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can build the rest of the circuit that pushes the floor underneath the player to make it easier for him to walk off and how to conceal it within a base okay so to build this you're gonna need everything you see in my inventory let's start by putting two sticky pistons facing up this is our vertical piston extender Next, we're going to make a monostable circuit that's going to pulse only when the current is turned off. So, repeater, set to two ticks, come off the side, dust here, two repeaters here. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and pop up to the side. We're going to come out, we're going to put two blocks right here. We can go ahead and give this some dusting. Really, you don't need that block here, but... Uh, whatever you can put a button right there that's to activate this next we're gonna come around the side I'm gonna go into this first piston now we're gonna go to the side of this block that the pulse is going into and we're gonna have a repeater here set to three ticks so that's two clicks come up go around into the side and finally we're gonna need to wire up the sticky piston that's gonna push that redstone block over to power this so what you do is you go up to the side here you put down a slab so dust right there block repeater sticky piston right here and then a redstone block now we just gotta build our pillar right here Two slime blocks right there whatever block you want to use for the pillar I'm using these just quartz pillar blocks because I think they look nice it also has the word pillar in its name all right that's all it takes so just for reference I'm gonna put block right there that's the floor you hit this button goes up and retracts if you want to go ahead and do this I suggest you do so I came out one more block put some dust down then I had a torch right here on this block that's just on top of this dust right here 
some dust, then this is the floor level, and a wooden button. It has to be wood. Here, let me show you what happens if you don't use a wooden button. If you use just a regular old button, it does that. So that's why it's important to use a wooden button. If you want to use a secret input device, I suggest you put a pulse extender on it. And if you don't know how to build one, they're really simple. I'm just going to go ahead and show you right here. It is comparators like this. And they go together and you can power it with a regular old button. But it'll stay on for longer. So if you do want to use something that gives off a shorter bit of current, that's how you can do it. I've gone ahead and placed this piston right here and I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can make it so that it pushes a block underneath the player while keeping all the redstone hidden in the walls. So if this is extended all the way, the highest you can go is you put two more pillar blocks and then the block right above it is going to be where you place the piston and the block that goes underneath the player. So we're going to go ahead and extend the pillar upwards. And at the end we have a pretty decent sized pillar here and that can be used for all sorts of buildings. And if you want to hide this redstone like I did at the beginning of the video, all I did here was I just, you know, cleverly placed some stairs and made it look like the architecture. But in order to hide the redstone, it's going to have to fit between a one by one space. I'm just going to go ahead and pop down here and show you how I built the walls in the video. So I had two rows of walls like this. And I had filler in the middle. Then I took some stained glass, white stained glass, and I had it built up like this, three high. And then I came up on the sides. And I went ahead and put these stairs here just to make it look like an arched window. And I did that on both sides. Just so I could have an excuse to make the wall have a little gap in the middle. If I can place this on here. There we go. So it's not a bad window. It's pretty decent. And then I put some blocks here just to keep the glass from looking through into the redstone. But then over here... This is where I hit all the redstone. I would have another wall here before doing the same thing. I just copied it over. But over here, we could hide the redstone to transmit the current up. Because as you can see, this circuit's going to be totally below ground. So we have the challenge of getting redstone to go directly up into the roof. And the way I did that was not using the standard slime block with a sticky piston and then having a block of redstone on top because of course the slime blocks would push all the blocks around it and that's no good and I guess we could make the walls out of an immovable material except that would be way too obvious and it probably wouldn't look good to be honest so the way I did this is let me go ahead and come down to the side here I had this little setup well, in reality, it was on this side, so I guess I'll do it like I did in the video. I had it come over like this and just kind of go to the side. It might not be exact because it's going to vary for each house you build, but I'm just going to show you the rough way you can do it. So you're going to have redstone coming off this way, and then I guess this will be where I stop it. And what I did here is I had a little hole right here. This is the hole shown right there. It'll line up with it. And then on this side, I just had a repeater. It doesn't matter if your repeater is on this side. If it's on this side, then you're just going to put regular old dust here. But I'm just going to keep the dust there. And what I had here is I had some blocks. Here, let me go ahead and come down to the side. I had sand on a regular old piston. It doesn't have to be sticky. You can use a non-sticky piston. And the way this worked is it would push the sand up, it would go through this hole, and then on this side I would have that repeater powered. It's a very crude way of transmitting signal upwards, but I think it's faster than using the torch method because I didn't want too much delay in between the two or else you would hit your head on the ceiling of like the block you stand on and that would be no good. So you just want to get a block that falls down. Yeah, let's see if I can get some sand. You can use gravel if you want, or red sand. They all work the same. Here, I'll just type it in. I'll do it the quick way. So we're going to put some sand here. Build her up. 
Alright, so when no current's going through it, you want it not to be activated, so you're going to have it right up with floor level. But as soon as this gets activated, it pushes it up, and then over here we go and power it. So I can just go ahead and come off to the side here, and I can do this however I really want. It's going to be kind of crude, because this part, like I said, varies a lot. But, you're going to have to play around. Alright, so as you can see, that went up, and then it pushed that over. So now, when you hit this button, it goes down, and then it goes back up. And I think I will need to put a repeater in here. Yeah, there we go. That should do the trick. Except I think I glitched out some sand. There we go. So... We're going to go ahead and do that, get in here, there we go. Probably would work better if I had a block on that side so I want to get pushed out. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So that works. Just to satisfy my curiosity, I'm going to take out this repeater. And we can try that one more time just to see if it will still work. Because if I can make it as fast as possible, that'd be nice. Well, I need to put that block right on. There we go. Uh, one more time. Alright, so I guess it would work just as well. I had a repeater there at the beginning of the video just because this redstone line was longer than most. Now, if you do want to make it so that your redstone is a little shorter, I mean, not a little shorter, but that the time in between the repeater is a little longer, we could experiment with different timings here. So I could put a repeater, and let's try two ticks. And then maybe this way we don't need to put a wall here. That's why I like redstone. It's a lot of experimenting. So let's see if this will work. It might not work at all. No, there we go. So it doesn't push us over as much. It still pushes us over a little bit. Let's see if we can get one more tick to work. So this is three ticks going into that. Let's see if we can optimize this. Alright, look at that. That's perfect. So if you want if you're not worried about speed and you don't have a wall on this side you can just put three ticks going into the sand just a little heads up guys depending on the size of your sand pillar you might need to time it a little different than I timed it right here with this repeater here I set this up just to demonstrate it when you hit this lever they both go up at the same speed but the one that's shorter falls to the ground first and that top block will fall sooner on the smaller pillar than it will on the large pillar. Now you could try inverting the signal and making it so that when there is no curve, when the piston isn't pushed up, there's nothing coming through this end. And all you have to do is really just go like this and then you can invert it and so it'd be on. So they both turn off at the same time except when closing again, there would be the delay. So you can't really get out of the delay. It's either when it's closing or when it's opening. So that's just something to keep in mind. I changed up my inventory just a little bit so I can show you guys how I build the button that transmits the signal downward in a one by one space. It's the same space as this, but it's mirrored on the other side. So you got your room right here, and so like here's your wall. And then you have the same wall layout on this side. So you're going to have a little divot right here like you have over there. And that's how I transmitted the signal. So the way I work that out is that we'll just pretend that this is the gap. So the gap's going to be in the same area on the other side. And just for symmetry purposes, we'll just we'll space it out evenly. Yeah, well, not too evenly, but it's close enough. So what I had is I had a block right above that hole just to make it look nicer than a button and I had under here uh, you can use a dispenser or a dropper I just happen to have a dropper on me right now and you can fill it up with any block something inexpensive like dirt or cobblestone would be good something you wouldn't too much care about about like not having at the time and right there you got nine stacks of 64 so 9 times 64 so 9 times 60 9 times 6 is 54 add another 0 540 about and then you got 4 times 9 so yeah you got you got a lot there that's a lot of uses of this button and you can go ahead and get a chest for the detection below and that way all your 
stuff goes into your chest, so you just move it back up every now and then after you hit it 540 times, but to be honest, that's not going to happen anytime soon. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But down here, we're just going to have where it comes in. So I'm going to make it at the same level of this redstone down here that comes in. So you're going to have a block right there. You're going to have your um, comparator, of course. And then we're going to have our chest just for all the blocks to go into. And we can come back up, except you might want to use something here like a here's a cool trick guys if you don't know this already stairs they don't um, block the chest function but they still act like a barrier so if you ever want to make it look like there's a wall there but you want to still be able to open a chest look at that you just place it upside down and from this perspective it looks like a wall but really you can still open the chest so that's a cool little trick but anyways we're gonna just build up just to make like a little chute for it to fall down. This is also the gap that's going to be in the wall, so it's not going to be, it's going to be there naturally, so it's not going to be too hard. It's not any extra building. So that's just what it's going to be like. So when you push this button, here I'm going to put some dust here just so you can guys see it go. We're going to push this button, and then that should turn on. You saw that turn it on for a split second. It only has a signal strength of 1, depending on what blocks you use. If you just use stackable objects, which I suggest you do so you get 540 something instead of getting 9 uses, it will only be a signal strength of 1. Now, if you use tools, I have no idea why you do that, because you only get 9 uses, you get a signal strength of, I believe it's 3 or 2. I'm probably wrong on there. But, just to solve this problem, just put a repeater there, and it's all good. So I'm going to have to come out to the side of this a little bit just to make it work. Now we're going to need to build something that can lengthen the signal. Because we're going to want to have a good long time to go through the hallways. It depends on how long the hallway is and how far from here to your button it is in your base that you're building to hide this pillar in. But we're going to want to build a signal extender. So the, we're going to have to make two different cells and I'll show you why in a bit. So if we just took let's let's make a big cell so say we're gonna make it's gonna we want the signal to last for a good long time so we're gonna put all these comparators here now you're gonna see a problem in a bit when I hit this all it does is create a clock that runs for a little bit before it dies out eventually actually will it even die out yeah it's slowly getting weaker and weaker there we go it's died out so that's that's a problem because we don't want it pulsing we want it on for a good long time so you just make one cell, right? And so that's, it's just the primary extender. So it extends this signal long enough to fully activate your second cell. If you have a huge row of comparators, you might need to make this cell slightly larger. But eventually, if you might make it so large to the point where it won't fill up all the way. And just a little trick so you can make it fill up all the way is way. How did that get there? Alright, that's weird. Is you can set that to four ticks, and then let's see, we can that's set to four ticks. We have the option of doing this. Little trick is for every one you place down here, you're gonna need to add one tick to this. Because this gives you four ticks of delay, and this is a combined four ticks. If we only had two here, we'd only need two. So as you can see, there we go, it turns on and goes off. Now let's do a little bit more experimenting. Let's see what happens when we go with only one tick. This may or may not work. Let's see what happens. Alright, that will work too. So I guess this adds one tick of delay as well. So, but if we add it on even more to this end, we hit this button. Oh, I guess that would work too. All right, so that's that's a little bit of learning we did there. I learned something, you learned something. It's all good in the hood. So let's keep on going. So we have that primary extender. So we'll just extend the signal. And now you can just go ahead and do this. Here we go. All right. So now when we push the button, 
See that lasts for a good long time. We can move over. It's still going. It's still going. And it's dead. All right. So that'll give us more than enough time to get off. So all we need to do now is we need to wire it up to this little panel right here. And it's going to be a little weird. Just one little bit of advice, guys. You're going to want to put a repeater here for two reasons. One is that when you hit this button, you're going to get some backflow going into this. And it will just power all these and make a little bit of a clock if it doesn't activate them and keep it open for an even longer time. So the repeater acts like a diode in that sense. Another reason is that this signal slowly dies. And while it might still be on, further down the line, it will end sooner. So just putting a repeater makes it consistent. So we can go ahead and work our way down. We're going to have to use a trick here get the current to come down and the reason why is because this oh wait no that doesn't go into that block alright never mind I thought it did for a second so we can get out of doing that we're gonna have to put a block there though just to keep these bits of current from crossing work our way around here I guess we could just go ahead and start working our way down it's gonna vary like I said earlier but there we go so I can just connect this a little bit. Night is falling. Set time of day again. Ah, there we go. Much better. Okay. So now when we hit this button, give it some time. We have plenty of time to drop down. Heck, I could hang out here for a little bit if I wanted. And it goes back up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it made something that seems a lot other, rather elaborate and spread out make a little more sense to you, and I hope this gives you many uses in many bases. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed this tutorial. See ya.